Hello everyone, John Manson here. So today I am speaking about um, volumetric attacks uh, versus trickle attacks. Um, so in general, in uh, a denial of service attack, um, it can either be lots and lots of traffic, so gigabytes and gigabytes of data to saturate a link. Um, so you see it a lot and uh, the problem is, is that when you're that intrusive, a lot of bells and whistles and um, a lot of alarms go off because of the amount of bandwidth um, you you know you've saturated a, a link. It's it's uh, very noticeable, of course. Um, either way, no matter how you do it, the the end goal is to make sure that legitimate traffic cannot absolutely not get to that network or to that server. Now. Um, so in order to generate this much bandwidth, you know, gigabits of bandwidth, you need a botnet or you need a lot of computers that are, um, that, that are infected with a virus or something like that. Uh, and then you need to amplify that traffic using amplification style attacks, which I'll cover more in, a, in another video um, because that's a subject on its own. Now, uh, there are, uh, on the sysadmin or the security admin side, there are different things to look for. Um, so, say you have a server or a network that, you know, a volumetric attack uh, is very simple to kind of uh, figure out. Uh, you know, you're getting hundreds and hundreds of source addresses, okay? hundreds probably thousands or tens of thousands in some cases and they're all ingressing at high rates of speed so you know you have a 10 gigabyte pipe and all uh, and all 10 gigabit of that pipe is now saturated um, a trickle attack can be um, a little harder to figure out the reason why is that um, a trickle attack doesn't necessarily need to generate a lot of bandwidth. So what happens in this case is that the packets are specially created to tie up resources on the other side of that link. So for example, uh, last video I talked about the SYN attack where we're taking up a certain amount of memory, okay? Um, say for instance, you had a SIP uh, server uh, and I sent SIP invite packets. So if you look at how SIP works, so the first, so in the TCP handshake, there's a, a SYN packet. Well, one of the first packets that are sent to establish a SIP call is a SIP invite packet. When you send a SIP invite packet, that particular server reserves that one connection waiting for a call to be made. Well, how about if I blast your server with hundreds and hundreds of SIP invite packets? Well, what will happen is, is that that doesn't necessarily generate a lot of traffic. It could be a couple megabytes of traffic because all it is is SIP invite packets. However, um, it can cause a devastating impact on the server because now everything is tied up. Um, similarly, uh, an HTTP GET for, say, a web server. So uh, I spoke about on the SYN side, um, you know, every time you launch uh, a connection, a little bit of memory is made. But in the Apache world or um, H HTTPD or even I uh, IIS, when you do an HTTP GET, <clears throat> um, you know, that on top of that, uh, that server needs to respond uh, to that connection. So that takes up a lot of, well, not a lot, but it takes up a little bit of memory. So now if I get legit HTTP GET, uh, well, traffic that appears to be legit and it's all HTTP GET traffic, um, that can really bog down my server. And so the thing that you got to look for at this point isn't necessarily the volume of traffic. Um, you know, I can attack a, a server maybe with a few thousand HTTP GET uh, transactions, 
But in reality, that's not, again, that's not generating a lot of traffic. So you really got to take a step back. You got to say, what's normal? Um, so uh, a lot of things in this case for mitigation need to be done at the per connection basis. Is it reasonable that one uh, client is going to do a thousand HTTP gets? No. Um, you know, and especially, uh, and if it is, right, depending on how your server is set up and how your website is set up, um, is it reasonable that that the client does a thousand HTTP gets, but at the same time, is it reasonable that it's done that in 30 seconds of time? Uh, probably not. So you need to set up your servers, you need to set up your networking gear, your firewalls and IPSs and all that stuff to say, hey, listen, um, you know, this traffic is not supposed to be, is not supposed to happen. So then you can start rate limiting the traffic, dropping the traffic, banning the source for the next 30 seconds or a minute to start rate limiting this type of traffic. Um, on the network side, on your Cisco routers, or actually I shouldn't even say just Cisco, but any router, um, you'll notice that you'll have a high PPS, so there's a high amount of packets per second, but there's not a lot of bandwidth. So say, you know, there's 100 megabits of bandwidth and you see 200,000 packets per second. <clears throat> well, as I say, um, I can generate a lot of packets without a lot of bandwidth. So these packets can be very, very small, a couple kilobytes each. And um, when at the other end, right, it's tying up CPU resources, memory resources, um, you'll find that sometimes uh, even on some networking gear, um, the CPU is all the way up and yet the bandwidth hasn't been saturated. Um, you'll see that in trickle attacks, right? And so now that there are even attacks uh, for DDoS at the application layer, not just find an IP address, ping the IP, or flood that IP address, we can tie up certain resources on a specific application uh, and crash that app or you know stuff like that. There have been vulnerabilities found in Apache and, and stuff like that. I don't know them off the top of my head, but that opened it up to DDoS. Same thing as uh, SMB, right, uh, or uh, SMB, LDP, uh, a lot of these protocols, they don't need a lot to tie up certain resources on that particular server or device that's hosting this. So in your mitigation and your DDoS planning, you need to account for these um, types of traffic. You know. You need to be prepared for either a high rate of speed, gigabytes and gigabytes of uh, data, or you need to be prepared to say, hey, you know, um, my network is slow and my network isn't saturated, what's going on here? So I hope this video shed some light on that topic. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm always available on my website, seanmancini.com, and by email, sean at seanmancini.com. See you soon, guys. Bye.